Seems like you're not that good at it, bro. So I'm gonna keep it walking and you can keep on standing here. Careful handling my property, right? <laughs> nice to finally see you out of eye, man. I feel like you've been ducking me my whole time here in AEW. What's been good? Mm. Skirt, skirt! Swear, swear, swear. Garments! Okay, now I'm done, dude. You can talk. I'm just kidding. It's my turn. Shane Strickland! Swerve! Look at you, man. See, a lot of people don't know this. We got a big history. Me and you, we used to do these long car rides on the road every single week when we were trying to make a name for ourselves on the independence. Mm -hmm. And now look at you, man. All grown up! All grown up! The boy done grown up. All the momentum in the world, beating some of the biggest stars this company has to offer. Man, I'm so proud of you. However! <laughs> see, I haven't been ducking you, boss. The reason me and you have never made eye contact in this place is because, unfortunately, there's levels to this shit. And you're just not on mine. And to make matters worse, I don't hear your theme music. Your theme music isn't on, therefore, neither is your star power. <laughs> it's funny you brought up those car rides back in the day, bro. They were amazing, right? You remember that? I, I was through the oh, night, yeah. Ohio to Jersey. Mm -hmm. It was magical. Mm -hmm. You were the best chauffeur I ever had in my life. Some of the best sleep on a road trip I ever got. That's because of you. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let's go back to the interaction between you and William Regal years ago. Yeah, like, didn't he bring up a email about a tryout that you just failed at and couldn't do it? Turned you to the whiny little bitch champion that we see today? Yeah, <laughs> you're right. There are levels to this. You do tryouts, I sign contracts. And be careful how you talk to me. Oh, because the last person that did I hung him outside the ring in front of 13,000 people by a chain. Mm. Solid monologue, bro. You, you're starting to get so good at talking. Again, proud of you. You t talk about Hangman an awful lot, though. It's almost obsessive. Now, it's funny you're talking about respect because I'm your world champion, kid. So I think you need to check your tone and watch your mouth. And while we're talking about your mouth, maybe you can show me some respect. Pull those hand-me-down Flavor Flav grills out of there when you're talking to me. But I do, I do have a question for you. You know, I just find a couple things odd. Let me run them by you. Yeah, come on, bring it on. What you got? You hate Hangman. More than anything, you want to be AEW World Champion. It's not like you're begging in every single interview about it. It's not awkward at all. Don't worry about it. So, putting those things together, when I really think about it, I mean, why wouldn't you frame Hangman with a beer bottle? Why wouldn't you jump Hangman? Why wouldn't you consistently try to get inside my head and have your goons in the Mogul Embassy continue to jump people left and right, creating a clear path for you to finally be a world champion, be on top like yours truly. So, Strick, are you the devil? A part of me really hopes so, man, because it's funny. You say, this is your house. Well, check it. You're looking at the big bad wolf of professional wrestling. If I feel like it, I'll blow your house down. And then, while I'm at it, I'll break both your arms so you can always swerve while you drive. <laughs> that ain't the devil you're looking for, bro. But you keep waving that championship in front of my face, I'm gonna be the one to bring you hell. <laughs> well, what is all good on this side of the hood, my friends? It seems you gentlemen look very, very busy, yeah? Well, me and my associate here, we have business elsewhere. Go handle it. By the way, boss, I forgot to put you on about collision last week. <laughs> 